Hi there, Serial Trader here. Let's have a check in with the major US indices. And as usual, starting off with the SPX wave chart. Now in the last video, uh, I think heading into this week we just had, I was saying it was, uh, I didn't think it was likely that we'd stay in this range for the entire week, but uh, so far technically, despite the uh, big move we started there on Friday, so far we have stayed in this range, uh, although I'll speak more confidently, heading to this coming week, uh, I think it's a really good bet that we're gonna break out of this range. And I certainly expect it to break out of the range to the downside at this point. Um, all right, so that being said, we have a couple scenarios still potentially in play here on SPX. So from the all-time high, we have our initial A down or one, and then we have the possibility that this is an ABC flat, uh, and for that's for either a B or two, and we're already kicking off uh, that larger uh, C wave to the downside. And that would uh, likely, uh, if we go to the four hour chart here, that would likely uh, at least come into the zone of the June lows there. So somewhere in the, uh, let's call it the low to mid 2700s. And if we do find a bottom there uh, in the low to, you know, low 2700 area, and more importantly, we have to find a bottom above the low here. So we have to make a bottom above 27, 28.8 for this to remain an internal retracement of this overall move up from the June lows and keep the uh, possibility alive for another impulse wave up. But if we do break that low, that'll change uh, the larger trend back to the downside. And then uh, at that point, we'll be looking for more bearish potential. But uh, at the moment, we don't know yet, but we do have a good idea that we're going to head down at least into that, into that area. So just to throw that out there. Now back to this uh, hourly chart. So it's possible that we have a little bounce up here. We are in hourly oversold conditions at this, at this point. So if we do have a nice bounce up, that would likely be a good opportunity for a fresh entry if you don't already have a position here. Uh, that straddle I mentioned uh, from the last video, that's actually already started to do well as of Friday's move. You had the implied volatility increasing on the options and of course the actual movement uh, to the downside made the puts do well. So that uh, that straddle position that I mentioned, basically if you'd entered at any time uh, during the week there, it's already, uh, it's already looking pretty good. And obviously if we break down here and get down to those uh, targeted levels, it'll, it'll perform uh, better still. And that was the September monthly uh, straddle and I think for SPX, the strike I was uh, playing with there, or at least that I mentioned there on Monday on the comment, uh, 29.25. Um, okay, so yeah, so there's this scenario. We got the flat already done and we're heading down. There's that, or th this is still a very uh, viable interpretation as well. And that's where we have the initial A wave down. Uh, and that would just be an A wave. If this is a triangle, wave two can't be a triangle. Uh, so this would just be a B wave, um, but we don't know yet. So in, at any rate, we got our A up, B down, C up, D down, and you see that C made a slightly lower high, B made a slightly higher low, D made another slightly higher low. Now, if we do get a bounce up here before we break down below this B wave low, so if we can bottom here short term before 28, 25.5 and get a bounce up here, this will look like a good E wave. And if we get this uh, and you get up into this E wave area, that will be an excellent place uh, to attempt just an outright short selling futures or buying puts. And obviously your, your stop would be against that C wave high at that point. Um, so unless we immediately break below this B wave low, this triangle interpretation certainly remains valid. Um, but either way, whether it's a flat or a triangle, we're still expecting our, our next leg down here. Um, so whether it's a C wave or a third wave, it doesn't really matter. The implications are the same. Um, so this should be interesting. If we can get a nice bounce up Monday, or maybe first couple days of the week. Um, and it looks like a nice three wave bounce into, into this E wave for that larger B. That's going to be an excellent, uh, short entry. Should we get it? Um, but again, if we are just in this flat interpretation and we just start breaking down immediately, if you're not already in, uh, it's a little late to be doing a fresh entry before you at least see some sort of a bounce. Um, 
So I wouldn't enter immediately, but uh, definitely something to be looking at for a potential short entry. Uh, if you're not already in, you gotta wait for some sort of entry pattern. Um, okay, so that's basically what we're looking at for the for the wave counts. A uh, couple different wave counts again, like I was saying, flat or triangle. At this point, I can't really see a bearish res or sorry a bullish resolution to this uh, choppy range we've been in. Seems very unlikely. Also, with uh, you know Mr. President uh, going a little crazy there on Friday and escalating things. Um, I, I can't really see that being uh, bullish here, at least in the near term. So I'd say the green light is, is flashing pretty hard here uh, for shorting this thing. Uh, okay, so that's that's the wave chart. Now let's go to the uh, Thinkorswim candlestick chart. And we're basically seeing the same message here on the candlesticks. So you can see the T line and the three T line, they've certainly been trending their way down. Again, we got another bearish cross, 3T line cross below the T line. We've closed well below the T line here. Uh, we almost got up into the overbought condition here in this oscillator, and now we're starting to turn back down. Nowhere near oversold. So certainly the green light is on there for further continuation down. 200-day uh, moving average sure looks like it wants to be touched here. And then, of course, you have the, uh, the critical June lows. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens if and when we get to that area for the bigger picture um, outlook, but uh, until we get to that area, we can't really decide whether this is just a bullish, you know, overall a bullish pullback, and then we go up again, or if we're starting something more severe to the downside. Not ready to make that call yet because we have to see what happens if and when we get down here. Okay, so now as far as daily candles, uh, we had a bit of a hanging man candle there on Thursday, and then of course a big bearish break on Friday, but the weekly weekly chart here on SPX put in a very nice bearish engulfing candlestick engulfing the the prior week there so bearish engulfing candlestick again uh, finding resistance on that weekly t-line close well below the weekly t-line so everything's lining up here for more downside nowhere near oversold on the weekly and certainly not even back to the previous uh, area here on the oscillator that we got to on that June sell-off so the message is pretty clear here uh, looking at everything we need to go down some here um, okay that's SPX we'll go do the Dow Jones Industrial Average very much the same thing so we had a, a doji star on uh, Thursday and a nice reversal off of that and then a big red day now we're right back to the, basically around the 200 day moving average on the Dow and similar implications we'd be definitely looking down towards those June lows here on the Dow. Uh, weekly, anything we got here on the weekly for the Dow? Okay, no. That's not a bearish engulfing on the Dow, but it, uh, it's definitely still a negative week. Uh, kind of an inverted hammer, although the uh, the real body's a little too large and the uh, upper, upper shadow isn't quite long enough, but certainly uh, still a bearish, bearish candle there, no doubt about it. But I do like that bearish engulfing on SPX. That uh, that gets my attention. Okay, so that's the Dow. And we'll go to the NASDAQ Composite. And okay, so NASDAQ Composite. So on Thursday, this was actually kind of the clearest signal from Thursday. Uh, so Thursday we had a, a bearish engulfing candlestick after a doji on Wednesday. Uh, so that was a good uh, sign that, hey, we're failing here around this resistance area. And then obviously good follow through uh, off that bearish engulfing uh, on Friday, big red day. And NASDAQ, same thing, definitely looking down towards the 200 day moving average and uh, also potentially uh, towards those June lows. And we got just slightly into the overbought condition here on the oscillator and now turning down from that quite nicely. So looks like everything's lined up for more downside. Now on the weekly candle here, do we have the same thing? Oh yes, so we have a nice big, now this is actually a, a better bearish engulfing candlestick than what we had on SPX. And by better, I mean it engulfs two prior candles instead of just the uh, the previous one. So this this looks nice. Uh, you know, the last week on the NASDAQ was basically a big doji start. Before that, kind of a bullish hammer, but obviously that didn't work out. 
So a bullish hammer, doji star, and then a huge bearish engulfing, engulfing those two prior weeks, uh, real bodies. So nice big bearish signal on the NASDAQ. And uh, I think the, the picture at this point is pretty clear. Looking at the wave patterns, looking at the candlesticks, uh, you know, looking at the indicators, we got to go down here some. Uh, it'd be very surprising uh, if this doesn't follow through, uh, at least down towards uh, some of those moving averages and uh, likely those June lows as well. Okay. So that's the NASDAQ. Definitely looking, looking nice and clear here at this point. Okay, and let's look at the VIX. So the VIX uh, definitely made another higher low. So again, the, the uptrend in the VIX remains. So you got the high, higher low, higher high, and then the, uh, sorry, low, high, higher low, higher high, another higher low. So uptrend is still developing in VIX. Um, and that's a nice big green, green candle there for the VIX. And if there's anything on the weekly here, so it kind of distinguishes things. Not really, same idea. So yeah, VIX looks to be resuming its uptrend, which is certainly a, a bearish condition for the indices. Not much more to say other than that. Now, what I will be looking for though, is say we break down to lower lows, which uh, seems pretty likely at this point, based on everything I've gone over here on indices. So if we break down to new lows in the indices, and VIX goes up, but say we make a lower high on VIX, okay, so anything below 2481 on VIX, so say we, say we get to 23 on VIX, or 24 and change, but not quite that level, and uh, we get down, you know, closer to the June lows and indices, but we don't quite break them, and then it looks like we're starting to reverse. That could be a potentially good buying opportunity on the indices, and a potentially good, uh, you know, selling opportunity on VIX um, for those that participate in shorting volatility. Um, or volatility products, but we don't know yet. But if we do break to higher highs on VIX, uh, that'll increase the you know larger bearish scenario on the indices. But again, we don't know yet, so something to keep an eye on. Now, okay, so on the VIX VVIX tool, that's given a nice signal here now. So we had another divergence between VVIX and VIX. So VIX made made uh, <clears throat> sorry, as the indices were consolidating. VIX made a, a lower low here. VVIX basically made a double bottom. So that was a nice divergence between the two. We got well above the red moving average here on VVIX. And now, of course, we've gotten below the blue moving average on SPX. So we're in a confirmed sell signal once again. And if you look at the last good signal we had here, uh, we had big follow through on that. So now we've got the signal again. So if we get uh, the same kind of move, I mean, we're looking at... Uh, Let's see where we broke down here, basically from, let's call it around 3,000 down to 28.22. I mean, that was that was a pretty good sell-off there. Uh, if we get the same kind of move there, you're looking at, uh, you know, almost a 200-point decline if it's similar. Um, I mean, that's 180, 200 points, something like that. Now, of course, that's from where we've gone below the blue moving average. We've already gone below that uh, a pretty decent amount. So we've basically gone already, um, well, what's the low here? 20, 28.34, 28.35. So we, we've already broken down a good chunk uh, of what you'd expect there, maybe a third. So yeah, it should be a good signal, but uh, it's a little late to be chasing here unless you get some sort of short-term bounce for a better entry. Uh, okay. Well, that's, uh, that's probably good for now. Certainly heading into the week. Um, we either immediately break down and just have follow through. And then if you're in a position already, then that'll be good. If you're not, uh, it'd be more ideal if we have a little short term bounce, give you an opportunity to get in for, uh, you know, a bearish position and then fall from there. But we'll see how the week shapes up. Monday should certainly be interesting. Uh, especially given, you know, a lot of the announcements uh, the president made were after the markets close on Friday. So lots of new information that needs to be expressed in the market come Monday. And possibly, well, you'll, you'll definitely see something in the uh, overnight futures Sunday evening when they open up. All right, should be interesting. Serial Trader, signing off.